Dun, dun, dun. They crawl the hoax. I am Chris Oak. This is Mark Hoke. Together we are the Incredible Hoax. <laughs> somewhat of a subdued mood for me. I can't speak for Mark. I think he's fine. I am somewhat subdued because sound issues remain on Cowboy and Lucky. It's fine on our website, but can't seem to get it on the air with sound. So we spent all day working on that again. And again, and again, <laughs> and again, and again. And we have a solution, but I would have told you that last week. So, until it actually airs with audio, I'm not going to say we have a solution. Right. I'm just saying we worked on it. And, you know, we... Well, I know you're redoubling your efforts, and... Re-quadrupling our efforts. Yes, yes. You know, we... Uh, and, uh, you know, we've worked on stuff on our end. They've worked on some more stuff on their end. On and on and on and on and on and on. And, on. and uh, you know, at some point you start thinking, well, it's all their fault. And I think to some degree they think, well, it's all our fault. And the truth is probably there in the middle. <laughs> you know? Right. But but uh, it does work on our website. So we at least we can say, we can prove that what we've done works. Because it works right. on our website, so... Take that for what you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for now, I would say, hey, you know, for folks, <laughs> if you go on the website, you're, you're going to see that the, the, the HD, the, 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 the video quality, and the audio quality, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't a technical problem when you actually did the shooting or doing the editing and your post-production. That, it's, it's, all come, it's all in the export, is what it is. Mm-hmm. Where, 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 the devil is in the export, and... Uh, this, I'm not going to get too technical because, frankly, some of it's way over my head, too. But anyway, we can export it in such a way that we can watch our website. And that, to me, justifies that it's not all our fault. Problem is, what we've exported is then being able to use it on the air with audio. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what we deliver to them works on everything else but them. You can play it on any computer it works. You can play it on, uh, we've even put it on a DVD, just like a raw DVD, it works. It works everywhere but on their station. But, I mean, to be fair, they're working hard. It's not like they're just sitting around not working on it. They right. are working on it. Right. So, uh, I'm just sort of defeated right now. I have to, <laughs> I'm not depressed or sad. Yeah. It's just kind of like when you've lost a football game. You're not just, You're not sad or depressed, you just... Kind of like, well, crap! I lost the football game. Well, you know that's how I feel. There's, they should know. There's a lot of good folks, including yourself, that have been working very hard on this. Not just for a week or two. This has been going on for months. A yeah. lot of hard work has gone into this, and uh, they they are committed to getting it right. And and they have uh, also the relationship mm-hmm. with the, the network, and they're trying to get it right as well. So. To put a time to put to put a time stamp on it, I wrote the first script. I think back in April of 2010. Mm-hmm. Now they actually shot the first pilot that never got used right. before I ever ever come on. So this, and then of course you're taking the Cowboy Lucky movie and everything else. Mm-hmm. But this series here is every bit of a year in development and, and work by some people, not all, but some by some people, lots of people. Yeah. So, but yeah, if, if 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 I could offer one thing, I I, I would just say, hey, we, you know, beg your patience mm-hmm. for this process uh, because it, it's it's going to get resolved and it's going to get fixed eventually. Mm-hmm. So, but nevertheless, they can watch on our website. Yeah, you can watch all three episodes that should have aired right appropriately. Are on our website. You can watch. Them. So if you and have they're perfect ex- there, they're fine there. Yeah, if you have access to the internet, you know yeah, why you're watching this show. When this show's over, go to redstreetcrew.com yeah. and watch the first three Cowboy Luckies. In fact, I don't know, for those of you who didn't catch it, when this last episode this Sunday was messed up, we started loading it and it was available last night or Sunday night before before midnight Sunday. We had it up on the website mm-hmm. and started blasting via 
Facebook and Twitter and everything else that it was up for people to watch it. And some people actually went over and watched it, you know, right then. Well, that's great. So that's we great. got some positive. And everybody, all the feedback we got yet is positive. I don't know what you thought. You've seen the, you'd already seen the first three shows anyway. Yeah, and that, 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 and that's what was ironic was that episode last night was my favorite of, yeah. the, of the uh, of the five or six that I, I've seen yeah. uh, completed so far. So, uh, yeah, I would certainly urge you to go on the internet and check it out. It's 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 my favorite. Also, I think if you've not seen the first two, th- this this third one really is is a. Uh, it's a good place to jump in because it, yeah. they, they get a, a job for the first time as bounty hunters, yeah. uh, at least on the show. Yeah. So it's, it really is a good place to jump in. Yeah, it's like, okay, the first one, the Gold Rush, is, I mean, it's not very deep on story and character. It's an action. It's an introduction. It's right. it's, it's kind of like a, 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 a prologue. Mm. A bam! Here it is. Yeah. The second one is an introduction episode, if you will, mm-hmm. of the Delia character, played by Kaylee, of, of getting her mixed into the group. And it's sort of like... Uh, it's sort of like uh, the beginning, or it's sort of the middle of Act 1 of a larger story, okay? Yeah. Now, of, now Daly, of, of Kaylee, rather. Delia, character Delia, is now with these two guys. And, you know, now she's in the fold. And then this one would be the end of Act One and the larger story of they go on a mission and you know things don't turn out the way they like it to be and you get you get a whole lot more character depth in, in this, this third one and it's kind of the end of Act One for yeah. the larger story. Right. Plus we introduce and also this third one introduces a whole bunch of important characters that will be used later on. Well, not a whole bunch, but two. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're significant. Yeah, two yeah. two major characters are introduced in the third one that will keep coming up. Mm. So, uh, so it sucks that it didn't work on forty four, but we're working on it, and you, you can watch them on the website now. Ta-da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the Red Sea Two business. <laughs> that's the Cowboy Lucky business. Now on to Hope business, by God. Yes, we're a movie talk show, and uh, you know it's interesting because uh, I I kind of went back and watched some of our older episodes because I was in a conversation with you know one of our, our nephews and he was asking about oh the uh, nephews he he watched a few of the old episodes middle or young or old? The, the, the middle middle and, okay the uh, inquisitive little one he uh, well anyway you know we've done now this will be our 18th episode yeah. so we've done quite a few so I wasn't sure exactly the number but I was you know I had an interesting talk with him and it got me to thinking that I, I wonder if people kind of get that our show's format is like we're kind of like a morning you know on one hand we're kind of like the morning talk show but for like movies because you know morning talk shows they, or, or even like those sports talk shows they'll have like you know, maybe five, six topics they'll cover yeah. throughout the episode, and you kind of like, we'll talk about that. With the exception of when we actually have a review or two, mm-hmm. that episode will actually devote mm-hmm. to talking about whatever the new release is, social yeah. network or, you know, right. Tron Legacy or something like that. And uh, and and that, those are a lot of fun because we get to either rip on it for, for 20 minutes or like Tron yeah. yeah like Tron or we get to talk about how great it is and like social network social network so well so what was his question I guess I missed that well what it was his was, initial I, well I, I can't even remember the specifics uh-huh. but it just got me to thinking that you know I know that we've had peop, a few people I've talked to they're kind of like well they're not, not sure what the tone or what what the show our show is mm-hmm. I said well it's a movie talk show just kind of think of it like a like a sports Show that has it has like multi topics or or like a morning talk show. That's kind of that's a no, cl- I've, I've never put that much thought into it to be honest with you. Well, I, kind of I have, you. yeah. I've tried. Well, you always wanted to be like PTI or something, right? That's what you've always kind of, yeah. If we're, if we're not reviewing, then I try to like model that to those shows because you know you try to have multiple to- topics and mm-hmm. keep things going and try to be interesting because I mean, that's really all you can do is. Either hit on some maybe current events yeah. in the movie talk world, or have a new review. So if you're not talking review, you got to come up with something that people will will find interesting. Well, I think as what, a film, what goes. I think the show is is just capturing us talk because this is how we talk. 
This is not an act. This is how we talked. Yeah, there's we no just script. talked. For, we just talked for an hour before the show rolled. Me and him got into a whole big yeah. thing about Ricky Gervais and the Golden Globes. <laughs> right. It turned into like <laughs> truth about politics, which turned into like a religious thing. Oh, and then, gosh. and then it went this whole big freaking. It went all the way around back to Ricky Gervais. Yeah. But meanwhile, we went via politics, religion, yeah. God. Uh, Relatives we can't stand, you know, people that get on our nerves back and they're ringing your face. And, ah, it, it was like the seas parted and, you know, there's lightning from the sky. But that's how we talk. So this show is just how we talk. Now, right. now, the shows that don't work are the ones that are, that are not how we talk. Like the one show yeah. where we did 25, the, the, the one show where we did the 25 uh, box office busts or whatever. You know why that show didn't work? Because that's not how we talk. Yeah, that was that. Me and you both kind of after that show, we we got talking about we it hated later, it. and we're like, eh. we hated that show. Yeah, I, I finally broke down and made myself watch it again. Yeah. It wasn't as bad, I remember, it but it's still pretty not, bad. It's not our best show because uh, to me, the whole appeal of the Incredible Hoax is this is how we talk. This is not an act. There's no script. I don't even know what you're going to talk about. Right. Most times, you only warn me if it's something particular. And usually when I get a movie of the week, I just have to think of it right then and there. Yeah. And uh, this is totally just, this is how we really talk. This yeah. is not an act. Yeah, this is not a, these things I'm holding are not like scripts or anything. It's just a few notes in case it's, it's you know, notes the conversation only. gets bored. Yeah, if we run out of a, something on a segment, yeah. I've got stuff that I can jump to or ideas I can quickly yeah. look at. To kind of propel us to the next segment. I mean, like last week we did the whole thing on the homeless. I mean, that's honest to God what I think about the homeless. You know? Well, yeah, that, I, we were supposed to like jump right into the segment. Yeah. But instead we went on about a four or five minute tangent yeah. on on homeless and... and well, it was, it was more about people's perception of homeless. And people, yeah, people, yeah. You know, like homeless, I don't, you know... But we didn't like say, hey, before we go into this segment on second chances, yeah. let's talk about that. We, yeah. we just, we just kind of... I mean, yeah, yeah. that's what we're, I mean, so whatever you hear us say, that's pretty much is really how well, I thought it was a good time. That. that was on my mind the last couple of weeks. Was, mm-hmm. It's like, so do people get that we're just kind of, you know, to kind of get the tone of the show? But yeah, but a part of the... The, the, the tone of the show, this is how we talk. Yeah. This is just watching us talk. Right. This is, that's the tone. Yeah. And ho- hopefully, I'll, I'll hopefully they find that interesting. Somebody does. We get, dude, have you seen the hits we get? Well, we get a lot of hits. I, I, I'm humbled. You know, we try to put on a good... We get a lot of hits. I'm not going to tell the number because I don't want them to know the number. Yeah. But it's a lot, trust me. I'll just put it to you this way. It's more than you think. <laughs> because I know most people are like, I'm the only son of a bitch watching this You know, like the nervous guy. No, it's, it's, we, get, we get the hit. Uh, it's not bad. I'm, I'm happy with... It. It, it, oh, that's awesome. You know? I'll tell you what, it's they're good enough numbers that I'm not really going, God, I wish more people watch it. No, I mean, I'm like, I'm kind of happy we got, wow, we got that many watching? Cool. Yeah. We got a lot of hits. I think it's because you look good, and I, and I don't. <laughs> I think what it is is... What? I think you're, you're, happy, you're somewhat attractive, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm ugly. Oh, gosh. And I'm horrible, and they're like, they're brothers. They're trying to figure out and examine if we came out of the same womb there's like so Which much. There's so much it's wrong with that statement. <laughs> but the fact that but even, thank you anyway. The fact that I even thought you were attractive, <laughs> that I even that I even judged you on those merits, is that a good self uh, Oh, yes, yes. Hey, what that, folks? We thank you for that. I love it. <laughs> thank you for watching another installment. Of this is how much I'm. <laughs> <laughs> man rape, man rape. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So after that public display, wow. section, where so do we go from here? I, I have a fun quiz. Well, okay, for I, us to do. I, and I want to do that, but I, one thing. Yes. Uh, we, I was on the morning show. Well, I'm on the morning show. Chris and Russ and Steph. Yes. That morning show. I'm on now. Regular on that now. Oh, you got pulled in there. Yeah, too? I'm a regular on that now. I don't oh, ever. Wow. I just sit there and I, I basically just. BS with the people online. Well, the last one I watched was just the three, so they, they pulled you in, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. We just cool. started that last week. It, basically, we, we do a live thing, and people can come live chat. I, basically, I just uh, I sit there, and I bring up pictures, and I might interject every once in a while, but mainly, I'm just online chatting with the other people, just talking. Oh, okay. And uh, sometimes I just joke, and sometimes I, 
I try and be a little more serious. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have no clue what I'm doing. Oh, but anyway, the point is, yeah. Russ asked me, he goes, now as, you know, we do the critic show. He asked me about the show. He says, you do the critic show, um, but I'm also a filmmaker. Has being a filmmaker changed the way I critique movies? And, uh, and uh, I was, I, I, my, my answer was kind of like, sort of. That was my answer. Mm-hmm. Because one, I still like and dislike the same movies. I've always liked and disliked. And he mentioned Remember the Titans. Like, I still despise Remember the Titans. Yeah. But that's not going to change because I'm a filmmaker. But, on the other hand, I just, Michael Bay, Michael Bay the person, I, I think is probably a good guy. I, I'm not judging him as a person. I'm not yeah. judging anybody we talk about on the show. I'm not judging yeah, him they're as a person. Not, it's, yeah, nothing personal. Yeah, I remember times, I think everybody behind it, Denzel, you know, I'm sure is a great guy and everything else. And we've said before, when we go to a movie, we don't want it to be bad. We, we're, we're, I want it to be good. We want it to be good. So, so I, don't, that's one thing I will put out there. We don't. Don't misconstrue our criticisms of movies for criticisms of people. <clears throat> right. And so I say it to say Michael Bay. I despise his style. I absolutely despise Michael Bay's style. You know, there's right. a special place in movie jail that he deserves to spend some time <laughs> in for his style. Uh, the Michael Bay, the guy, I'm sure is fine. I, I, hell, I'd love to meet the guy and debate him or just, you know, kiss his ass for a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, but anyway, I despise his style. It's horrible. It's horrible. Horrible. He he's butchered Transformers. That movie The Rock is unwatchable to me. Armageddon is just oh my god. The one movie of his I probably liked the most was well to was probably Bad Boys Two and The Island. Those I thought were okay, but he tended to tone it down some in those. Yeah, yeah. But it's all the quick cutting and stuff, and it just mm-hmm. and he'll just jump these leaps of logic. Just they just uh, oh it just drives me nuts. Like Transformers, they're in the de- they're at the dam and then in a big city. And it's just, there's no real establishment of shots to get you from the two places. It's just boom, boom. Right. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense. It's incoherent. But having said that, I respect like hell the fact that he gets these major productions pulled off. There ain't a whole lot of guys on Earth that could pull off something the size of Transformers 1 and 2 and, and some of these other things. And he does it quickly. That's and he does a, it quickly. That's, and that's a, that's you never amazing. hear about budget problems. Never. You don't really hear a lot of actors not liking work or anything. You know? Just one. But she's, you know, well, but, Sarah the source. I mean, you know, yeah, that's, I mean, she's, you know. We know she's kind of over the moon. Yeah, but if it wasn't for her, crazy. I mean, if it wasn't for him, you know, there wouldn't even be on her. Yeah, so she wouldn't even, yeah. She wouldn't be what she is without him. <clears throat> Megan Fox. Yeah. Yeah, we're, that's who we're talking about. So anyway, I respect, now that I'm a filmmaker, God, do I respect the work he does. I hate his style, but I respect the work, if that makes any sense. Oh, it, completely. Because I, I, don't, I, you know, I think of myself as a pretty, I'm, I think I'm, I'm learning stuff, and I'm a day, I know, I'm, I, have, I have total faith in my writing skills. I'll put my writing against mm-hmm. anybody working in the business or not. That's how confident of how good a writer I am. Mm-hmm. But as a director, man, I got a lot to learn. I'm good at managing people, but I got a lot to learn. I couldn't pull off Transformers. I don't know anybody personally that could pull off Transformers. I think you got to have some moxie and some skills. And so I have a deep respect for Michael Bay. Yeah. So having said that, you've been around me now getting into this business, and you're kind of mm-hmm. kind of come along with it. How has all this affected your criticism of the movie? How has it affected me? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because I have, because I've been a little more involved with it all now. But now you're kind of on the, you've been on the fringes looking in, you hear me tell stories, and now you're starting to kind of get into it. Now what do you think? Well, you know, I guess truthfully, the the only place where, for me, it's, 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 a, it's affected me where I'm not as critical is to do with the marketing and the, and the selling. Uh, oh, I, I get you. That I'm not as critical because I used to be really, uh-huh. as you know. I mean, I'm I'm the guy that you know through the, the 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 trailers, and I'm like, that's so stupid, and I'm yeah. laughing and and whatever. I'm not as bad, <laughs> yeah. but if I yeah, if I see it, another one of those stupid comedies, you know that that there's like they're like a dime a dozen every year. I, I'm, if you see me in the theater, I'm still gonna laugh at those. Right. Uh, so being around the business a little bit has made you more uh, eased up on the marketing aspect. Oh yeah, because well, yeah. you've actually been around me and like Chris and Russ and, and, and the others talking about marketing. Is that is that what you mean? Is that well, yeah, is I mean, that it, part of it. Well, that's part of it because also you see the effort that goes behind. Ah. 
too that these people are you know they're wanting and 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 they're and and also with the recession and and and, and seeing what the, the the climate of the country is and how yeah. a lot of movies that are good are just not doing that well yeah along with y'all's efforts to really kind of get things up and going and mm. and, uh, and and put out and kind of find an audience and so forth yeah. it's you know, it's a lot harder than you think to find mm-hmm. an audience and and and, yeah. and to get people kind of buzzed and talking about something that you know that you're excited about. Yeah, it's a lot trickier than you think. So I'm a lot. You know, I, I used to be very. I mean, actually, it's still written here. I, I had written a thing that to do uh, a segment on movie trailers with annoying trends. Well, we never got to that because it was kind of like I was something I wrote. I think on the. Either the second or third episode. It, this was early during Incredible Hoax that I wrote this as a, a segment idea, yeah. and we never we've never gotten to that, and probably won't now because I'm I'm, a, I'm so more I'm like well I kind of see that there there are challenges to mm-hmm. find an audience, but as far as an actual story mm-hmm. and the film itself, I'm so far I'm still just as critical as I was yeah. a year ago. And I don't think that I don't think that should or could. It shouldn't shouldn't change. Yeah, I mean, I still my tastes are the same. You know, I'm never gonna like musicals. As much as I get into this business, I'm never gonna like musicals. Right. It just ain't in me to yeah. like it. And I'm not gonna get on board with horror. Right. You know, ninety nine percent of horror movies are all right. retread of the same idea. Yeah. You know, it just it just bores me. Right. Uh, and uh, so I, I I have a deeper respect for. For instance, the movie Grown Ups, Adam Sandler Grown Ups. Mm. Horrible movie. Oh, you, have you seen that one? No, no, not yet. Don't get in no hurry. Horrible. It's absolutely atrocious. Do you know that, that I, the one thing I do know about that movie is it beat Night and Day at the box office. Really, actually, you know, when you talk about Night and Day. And, it, and, a, and, a, and now, based on what you're saying, it sounds to me like Night and Day should have been the movie. Oh, God. It was, that, that it should have been the hit. Infinitely not, better. Not Grown Ups. But Grown Ups ended up being a, 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 what was a, a huge hit. It's a big hit. Like huge hit. But you watch it, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. It's, there's no story. There's no cohesion to it. It's just, it's, it's just a mess. It's a freight train wreck. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, there's no plot whatsoever. No, your basic story is you out the window. It's just a bunch of stars who were kind of friends and somehow got the budget together to be able to work on a movie together. And <laughs> how they ever talked Sam Hayek into doing it, I'll never know. How they got, what's that other chick name? What's the chick from History of Violence? Maria Bello? Yeah, but yeah. She's in it. Like, Maria really? Bello? Really? Because she's a hardcore actress, man. Yeah. She don't mess around. She yeah. does usually some serious stuff. Right. She's in it. Well, that's why like, I was shocked when she did uh, Mummy 3. Because she replaced Rachel uh, yeah. uh, Weiss. Forgot about that. And I was like, yeah, she Maria Bello, how'd you pull that off? She does some tough stuff usually. Yeah. And she's in it. And I'm like, I don't know how they got to talk these people into this. But okay. And I remember watching it at the theater thinking, you know what? This is horrible. But I'm glad this crew got this work. That's honest to God. I was like, all the people that worked on this now, I was like, man, I'm sure glad they got got this gig. That was the only thing redeemable in it, was that it, it paid some, some crew people. I see what you're saying. It's like, yeah, the it movie... It was a job for somebody. It was a job for somebody, but the the story and the... It, was, the, yeah, it had no... The product was horrible. No redeeming value in that. It, the only redeeming value about the whole thing was that it gave some people a job mm-hmm. for you know, how long it took to make it. Six months to a while. <laughs> and so, yeah. That was... I mean, and I wouldn't have thought that before I got into filming. I would have thought this is a piece of crap. Shame on y'all. Shame on you. But now I see the other. Well, and, and I think I think uh, I think to be fair, to kind of add one final th- note is films that have like really small budgets. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to be from now on. I think a lot easier on them too because I understand if you just if you're working off and like in this day and age and you film something with like mm-hmm. a uh, like a five million dollar budget. Yeah. And it ends up being something that has a really big feel to it. You know, that's going to be impressive. I mean, yeah. the fighter, the budget was eleven million dollars. Yeah. Now you think about that. They got Amy Adams, Christian Bale, and Mark Wahlberg. These people had to love the script. To all How much was it? was eleven million dollar budget wow. to do the fighter. Yeah. They had to all take. Cuts. Massive cuts. Massive cuts. Look at the horse power in that movie, too. Yeah, and I mean, all of them are giving these tour de force performances. I mean, um, so. Yeah. 
<laughs> but I mean, but that's just the thing. I mean, in a, in a small budget, you know, you're so limited, and you don't have the luxury of time, and you have to. There's just, just do you have a lot of obstacles uh, in your way as well? So I think uh, from now on, I, I think movies that are, if I know that they their budget is small, I'm probably going to be a little easier too. Well, yeah, because Zucker and Cowboy and Lucky, you know what our budget is? Yeah. Zero. None. I mean, other than what we spent to feed, you know, when we would do lunch, so sometimes we didn't even have to have meals. Yeah. We just meet, shoot, and leave. Right. Sometimes we were there all day. We had to, you know, feed people. That's about it. You right. Know? You know, that's about the the, the the cost that we endured. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I remember. I remember when y'all did the gold rush. I mean, y'all had uh, y'all had plenty of like bottled water, yeah. Gatorades. Mm-hmm. Uh, my gosh, they, y'all probably had about five boxes, big boxes of donuts. So everybody yeah, actually, you know, one of our sponsors, they like donuts. Yeah. Uh, kicked in all that stuff. And, you know, and Big Red gives us all the drinks we want, too. So we've had our sponsors, man, have really liked. So Daylight Donuts and Big Red, go out, if you watch this, and get yourself a fistful of Daylight Donuts yes. and a big Big Red and just, like, have three in your hand at once and take a bite out of all three yeah. and then wash it down with Big Red and it's just going down, down your shirt. That's what you need to do after this. Yeah. You know, go early, go off, and tell a friend. Go early. Go early and go off. Yeah. Uh, That's like me after Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, speaking of that sponsor, uh, go to... <laughs> <laughs> go to the House of the Molly. It's on Franklin. Are we ready for one of our abrupt, we have no segue for this? Let's move to the next one. Yeah, let's just have a big rough cut and then clunk, go. Thank you.